welcome to my brain, my heart, sports talk with Mike. I brought it back because three or four people decided it was something they would rather enjoy seeing on my show. I was one of those four. If you can't tell, I'm wearing my Syracuse Orange t-shirt because I am an avid fan and an avid believer in the Syracuse Orange and winning the NCAA championship. They're in the final four, so I am showing my love. Today's episode is actually a fun episode. It's Easter, so I thought I'd just uh, have a bit of fun. I'm going to uh, list off my five matchups in the NHL who, uh, of players I'd like to see fight and who I think would win. I'm going to give my uh, surprising and disappointing uh, teams in the NHL, three forwards, two defensemen, and a goalie. I'm also going to be uh, talking because there's ramblings of uh, the famous Coyotes uh, relocating once again. I'm actually going to quick, uh, kick it off with a quick, fast, sweet rant. Uh, I was in the shopper's drug mart today, picking up wipes to wipe my son's ass. Uh, and these two gentlemen, who were humongous steroid yokozunos, uh, like they made Andre Giant um, look like a mini-me, um, they were arguing over which wrestler was the best wrestler uh, in the sport and which... Um, uh, was the best, best of the athletes uh, through entirety of sports. Um, now, I didn't say anything to them because they could kick my ass. Um, I had no doubt about that. I don't know Kung Fu. But what I really want to say with them is that you two are idiots. That uh, the WWE, WWF, the former WWF, it's not a sport. We're, like, what makes it a sport? There's, there's nothing about it. Uh, about, about the WWE, uh, that's not a sport, come on! Like, I can't really... The guys involved, like, the, the men and women uh, of wrestling involved, they're athletes, yes, because it takes athleticism uh, to perform the stunts uh, and uh, moves, the series and the sequences of moves uh, that, that uh, partake in wrestling in the show. Um, but it, it can't be a sport because everything is predetermined. All the moves of practice, everything is just a practice for the show. It's like uh, it's like they're getting married. You have that rehearsal dinner the night before, and then everything goes down. It's the exact same thing with wrestling. You have the rehearsal, and then you have the show. You cannot make it a sport. It cannot be determined as a sport if everything is set out beforehand on who's going to win the matchup uh, and what is going to uh, take place. Because in the real sports like hockey, baseball, basketball, football, soccer, equestrian, water polo, cricket, you don't know who's going to win the game. You don't know who's going to win the match. You don't know who's going to win the championship. Now, as uh, the fans of WWE, they don't know who's going to win it until it actually happens. But everyone else that's involved within the match, they know who's going to win the matchup. They know everything because it's like a soap opera. Everything, it's, it might as well be... It, Instead of calling it WWE, you should call it uh, General Hospital or um, just uh, Days of Our Lives. Just why not call it what it is? Because it is a soap opera. Uh, there are just actors that are athletes. That that's all they are. And uh, until they understand, uh, people, fans understand that it's not a sport. Uh, don't call it a sport. Like don't just don't call it a sport because it's not a sport. Call it an entertaining show with some great athletes. Um, that are doing some high-flying tricks because it's a circus. That's what it is. End rant. If you think I'm an idiot uh, and saying that it's not a sport, uh, rip into me. If you uh, agree with me, let me know. Next up, the five matchups in the NHL where fights would take place and who would win. I'm going to start off with two brothers, Eric Stahl and Jordan Stahl of the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, who would not want to see two brothers going at it? I remember seeing uh, just a short, uh, like a, a, a small little uh, newspaper clipping of uh, when Phil Esposito scored on his uh, brother Tony Esposito back in the 70s, I think it was. Uh, just uh, how the mother was just like, I don't know who to, to, to go with. And then when Esposito, Phil Esposito scored on his brother, his mom was actually kind of mad. Now, I think there was a fight between brothers. I cannot remember, and I never looked into it, but it just dawned on me. I'm pretty sure there was an NHL fight uh, where two brothers went at it. Or, like, just uh, first cousins. Just something where just really family members uh, clashed in, in a brawl. So that just, I mean, imagine seeing, uh, as a parent, 
or just as fans seen the two brothers fight. I mean, they can't fight because they're on the same team now. But when Jordan was with Pittsburgh, uh, just those two go at it because those two are the ones that I think, uh, I mean, uh, they, they both won a Stanley Cup. Uh, they need to kind of uh, see who's winning uh, in a fight. I think Jordan Stahl wins. Um, I just see him as a more physical stature type guy uh, that would throw a harder punch. And I see him as that power forward and Eric as that finesse, uh, finesse player. So I, I, th I would give the, the, the fight to Jordan Stahl, hands down. Next up, uh, the uh, I, don't, I think I have the last six uh, Lady Bing trophies. Pavel Datsuk has won four of them and Martin C. Louis has won two. Or I have the last seven. Uh, because last year Brian Campbell won it. So that's who has won for it. Martin St. Louis has won two. So imagine those two uh, going at it in a fight. I mean, they both uh, are very small guys. So imagine just uh, both of them just dropping the gloves, taking the helmet off, taking off the elbow pass, and just chucking the Dukes. Who would win in a fight? Martin St. Louis is the shorter of the two, but I see him being uh, the, the winner. Because if you look at like Theo Fleury, just, uh, the, the, he was ferocious. Uh, he was an ankle biter. St. Louis, uh, I think he's just got some hidden talent uh, with his fighting skills when within himself. So I think St. Louis wins that fight. Next up, I'm going to go to the Colorado Avalanche with Matt Duchesne and Ryan O'Reilly. Both were drafted in the 2009 NHL draft. Matt Duchesne third, Ryan O'Reilly 33rd. So imagine those two going at it. And... I mean, especially over the controversy that, that happened over the, the, the past year, where Duchesne signed for a, uh, a contract, it was a contract-friendly contract. It was, I mean, uh, $7 million over two years, and Ryan O'Reilly held out. And uh, some comments made by Matt Duchesne uh, gave people uh, the sense that he doesn't really care too much about Ryan O'Reilly. So imagine those two just chucking it, chucking the dukes, uh, like chucking fists, chucking hammers, like just, the, the, I mean, the winner of the fight, uh, stays with Colorado, the other uh, has to retire. It's like one of those fights. I actually think Ryan O'Reilly would win the fight uh, just because I, I, he's not classified as a power forward. I just, when I watch the games, I see him being uh, like uh, just uh, an angry guy. I mean, Matt Duchesne's emotional, but Ryan O'Reilly looks angry. And he looks like he should go to anger management at, at times, honestly. Next up, we got the uh, Taylor Hall versus Tyler's again. Edmonton Oilers, Boston Bruins. I, the, the whole um, leading up to the draft, who's going to go first, who's going to go second, just that whole, um, pretty much it was just, like, it was exciting. Like, the whole uh, lead up to uh, who's going to go first or all was amazing. I, I think just to have those two go at it, um, because it really, I mean, this year Taylor's having the better year, but last year Tyler had the better year. And it's just been uh, an up and down seesaw on who's actually the better out of the two. So a fight would actually determine it, and I'd actually give it to, uh, to Taylor Hall. Um, I, he chucked the, uh, he had a fight there, and he injured himself uh, a couple of years ago. I think it was his rookie season, and he, and he was out uh, because of a fight. I think he's a strong dude. Just watch him along the boards. I think he's strong, and I think Tyler is more of a, uh, I'm gonna get out of the way kind of guy. And the last fight, Sidney Crosby of the Pittsburgh Penguins against Alexander Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals. And I'm pretty sure everyone saw that. Everyone probably, as soon as I said the five matchups, everyone had a premonition of me making this the number one fight. And uh, I'm going to go with my boy, Sidney Crosby. I think the leg power. I think he would actually just control Ovechkin. Uh, I think Ovechkin would actually have great hands, uh, just like he does with the stick. I think he'd have quick, great hands. But Crosby, he's been in a couple fights. Andrew Ferentz, uh for one, and... Uh, I can't remember. He got in a fight with the Florida Panther after Malkin got knocked over. Um, but I just see him just really controlling the fight with his big ass trunk, tree trunk legs. And that, that'd be it. So Crosby, uh, you're winning that fight there. Next up, my surprising NHL team and my disappointed NHL team. For the three forwards, I got uh, Chris Kunitz of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Nazim Kadri of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and Matt Cullen of the Minnesota Wild. Kunitz's numbers, 20 goals, 24 assists for 44 points. I know he's on the line with Sidney Crosby, but Crosby isn't the one that's always... I mean, Kunitz is just in there. I mean, he does everything he needs to do, and he, he compliments Crosby. I mean, he definitely uh, probably wouldn't be scoring 44 points without Crosby, um, but it doesn't matter. I mean, a lot of this, he's getting to where he needs to be to score the goals. He's uh, making it pretty easy for Crosby if you watch the games. Nassim Kadri, uh, 17 goals, 22 assists for 39 points for the Toronto Maple Leafs. No one, 
a lot of people didn't even think he was going to be on the Maple Leafs uh, roster this season if, with Brian Burke at the helm. Uh, he's gone, he got his opportunity, and he's taken grasp, and he's running with it. He's doing his thing. He's amazing. Uh, and Matt Cullen, 7 goals, 18 assists for 25 points for the Minnesota Wild. He's usually a, a third-line check and center who's just uh, known for kind of shutting down, not even the first line, mostly the second-line uh, guys on all opposing teams. But he's actually putting the puck in the net, making things happen, uh, creating opportunities. He's really having a great year. On defense, we got Slava Voinov of the Los Angeles uh, Kings and Fra Francois Boschman of the Anaheim Ducks. Voinov has four goals, 17 assists for 21 points for the Reign and Stanley Cup champions. He's uh, an unheralded... Um, MVP for that team, he has to be, because uh, Drew Doughty, he's not doing anything. Um, I actually should have put him on my disappointed team, um, but he's actually uh, doing a lot better actually the last 10 games, so he uh, didn't include him. But Voinov, he, he's doing wonders, he, he's making things happen. And Francois Beauchemin, uh, he's known more for his defensive style, making defensive plays, uh, stopping the top lines uh, on the opposing teams. He's got 5 goals, 16 assists for 21 points, he's up there uh, in the Norris Trophy candidate Talk, and I like that about him. And the goaltender, Sergei Bobrovsky of the Columbus Blue Jackets. 11 wins, 8 losses, 6 overtime losses, uh, a 926 save percentage, and 2.19 goals against average. For the Blue Jackets! Like, what more do I have to say? He's doing phenomenal for the Blue Jackets! That's it. And my disappointing team, uh, Martin Havlet of the San Jose Sharks, Travis Sajak of the New Jersey Devils, and David Jones of the Colorado Avalanche. How that? You have four goals, seven assists, 11 points for the San Jose Sharks, who kicked like, the very start of the season, they were the best team in the NHL. Even though the Blackhawks were on that streak, San Jose looked like they were unstoppable. But no matter what, you're getting paid uh, about, what, between five and six million dollars a year? 11 points? That's, that's not cutting it, bro. What, like, what are you doing? I, I hear his name in the trade rumors, uh, so hopefully he gets a fresh start. Maybe that's what he needs. Travis says, Jack. Five goals, eight assists, 13 points for the New Jersey Devils, who surprisingly are in the playoff race, um, and it, I, I'm still surprised by it. He's their number one center. you got Ilya Kovalchuk, uh, Patrick Ilyas. He's doing pretty amazing for the Devils, but say, Jack, you're not doing anything uh, points-wise, and uh, defensively, you look like you're lacking a bit too, man. What's up? David Jones. He picked up a, a, a $16 million four-year contract uh, with Avalanche uh, before he came up, instead of becoming an unrestricted free agent, so he's getting $4 million a year to score three goals and have four assists for seven points. What the hell are you doing, Greg Sherman? I mean, David Jones, he scored, he had about 27 goals uh, like uh, uh, for back-to-back uh, -back years kind of thing, but this is brutal, man. You look like you're lost on the ice. What are you doing? And defense, Braden Colburn of the uh, Philadelphia Flyers and Eric Johnson of the Colorado Avalanche. And it's, I, I have two Avalanche players on there, so it's really hard for me to do this. But Braden Colburn, uh, one goal, four assists for five points. Uh, you're, you're defensive uh, defenseman, and you're doing your great job doing so, but you're, you're not really uh, contributing offensively whatsoever, and the Flyers are having a brutal down year, uh, like third worst in the league right now. And you're really not uh, making, uh, making it easy for your team, man. Also, I had you going on, going to be on Team Canada, and the way that you're going, you're not. And Eric Johnson, zero goals, four assists uh, for, for the Avalanche this year. And you got injured uh, for, and you're out, out for a bit. But no matter what, four assists, uh, there's no excuse for that. You haven't scored a goal in like 50 games, man. That's just nuts. Like dating back to last season, I, there's, you're supposed to be the number one uh, defenseman. Uh, you ha you're getting paid over $4 million. Uh, so for each assist, you just got paid a million dollars. Congratulations. And the goaltender, Mika Kiprasov of the Calgary Flames. Uh, six wins, nine losses, two overtime losses, an 873 save percentage, and 3.52 goals against average. That looks like a QMJHL numbers. And even if you put him in the QMJHL with those numbers, he's not the best goalie. He's probably not, not even top 10. So you're having a brutal down year, man. Sorry, Kipper. And you're probably not, not going to get traded because... Uh, you had a son and you want to stay in Calgary, and I understand that. You, probably you should retire after this season, my opinion. And last but not least, with all the rumblings and all the rumors, I mean, Phoenix Coyotes have uh, supposed to be relocated uh, for the last five, six years now. It's never been done, but it looks like it's uh, a good chance of it happening and should be announced just before the NHL playoffs uh, start. 
Uh, I mean, there's uh, three places uh, Phoenix, uh, Phoenix could be going to. It could be uh, Hamilton, uh, Kansas City, uh, and uh, Quebec. Quebec City. Now, first off, you can't go to Kansas City. You look at the Royals. You look at their attendance numbers. You can't take uh, a team from Phoenix where attendance numbers are low, uh, better than they have been, um, and go to Kansas City where uh, it's be the exact same thing. You can't do that. Um, to, to move them to uh, Hamilton, that's three NHL cities in one province. And uh, that's just, with Canada, you got all these provinces. you you got to really spread it out. I, I would love to see an NHL team here in Halifax. I don't think we could really um, hold a team here just yet. But give us about five years. I think an NHL team here would really would definitely thrive. The team's got to go to Quebec City. And it cannot take the name of the Nordiques because it already pissed me off when Winnipeg, uh, uh, when, when the Atlanta Thrashers moved to Winnipeg and they took the Jets. You're not the Jets, man. You shouldn't have done that. So they got to go to Quebec. It would create an incredible rivalry with the Montreal Canadiens. It would really actually boost up attendance numbers um, just throw that one like, like a rivalry between Quebec and Montreal. And it, that's what I would love to see. Just, uh, like, rivalries I'm finding are, are dying down a bit. And uh, that would just really uh, make it work very well for the NHL. Uh, and uh, I, I, would, I think Shane Doan, imagine a C with, uh, and with him in Quebec. I think that would be amazing. And uh, I, I think uh, they, they'd be one of the top teams in, in, the, in the NHL because a lot of the French Canadians would want to go to that team. My beliefs? I think so. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, anything you'd like to uh, rip me up about, do so. And uh, if you like me, do so. Tell me. Like, do so. Please tell me. I hope you enjoy your day once again. That's it for My Brain, My Heart, Sports Talk with Mike. And it's a whole lot better when I add this because it feels really powerful.